This episode of the award-winning Here For It podcast is brought to you by the greatest living athlete of all time. Me. No, you don't do nothing athletic. <laughs> um, Serena the GOAT, G-O-A-T, greatest of all time, Williams, is not to be toyed with, is not to be fucked with, and would y'all fucking stop now? Please. The next person that has a problem with Serena Williams, I'm throwing a Louboutin at. And that's non-negotiable. You came into my culture. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to get there. I'm you pulling up to addresses. I'm, I'm pulling up to addresses. I'm going to need barbs. I'm going to need um, the Barney Beehive. Gang. I'm going to need everybody. I'm going to need the bar. I, everybody. The Rihanna stand. The Navy. The Navy. Everybody unite. Because what Gaga fans names is? I the know. Monsters. Oh, Chad, I put them first and foremost. Um, I need everybody to unite because the next time somebody comes for Serena Williams, we have to throw Louboutins. Period. Louboutins oh, and the little city girls and the few city girls fans that's left. Join what? us. Oh, uh, well. Mm, <laughs> join us. Mm. All right. Put the monsters first, the city girls group second. I'm putting the beehive first because they organized. No, no, no. no. You, that's why we're we're the policy hold. We're the policy makers. We're, we're, not, we're putting these other girls on the front lines. Oh, so they can get shot first. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Ronald Matters, aka the host of Butch Queen Radio, BKA the Kim Kardashian of Bottom Reform. Right. <laughs> um, I am the Superman T H E E S U P A M A N, <laughs> aka the Anal Assassin, BKA the Above Average Butch Queen. It was so weird because Kanye. Allegedly, I haven't seen where it was or looked for it, but um, Kanye said somewhere that Kim Kardashian is in law school. I was like, girl, you got one girl free, and now you the, you the whole, I'm inspired. First off, there are prerequisites to get into law school. She didn't even feel like, like, like it, like, what? High school was a problem for Kim Kardashian. What do you mean? She got it. So, who put Kim Kardashian? If Kim Kardashian can go to law school, I could uh, be the face of bottom reform. <laughs> so what are y'all gonna do to reform? <laughs> uh, when tops make posts about us on Facebook, I'm going to um, clear my sister's name. <laughs> That's not a reform. Y'all already do that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> shit. Wow. No shit. Wow. Um. Mm. <laughs> This week's icebreaker is Pose Inspired. Again, like oh, I told Lord. you guys about previous episodes, I am rewatching Pose because it should be revered. It was amazing. I love Pose so much. It was amazing. It should be revered and should continuously be talked about even in the off season of Pose. Amen. Which Pose character are you in real life? Ooh. And who are you definitely not? Um, I'm definitely not selling drugs. <laughs> So, lay so boy and drag. I'm not poppy. No, I'm not selling drugs. I can't count poppy out. <laughs> I'm, 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 mm. Um, I appreciate um the dancing queen, dancing queen. Um, who went to dancing school and did pirouettes and stuff. I appreciate his work ethic. I feel like when it comes to work, I give the same. I might not be a dancing queen. Um, but I definitely, when it comes to my work, I'm definitely serious about my work all the time. It stresses me out majorly. Um, so I appreciate his work ethic. I do have a similar back family background story. So I could see th a lot of those things except for me doing ballet. I'm not doing ballet. Sorry. Okay. You just going to do hip hop dance. <laughs> <laughs> Interpretation. Oh yeah. Creative dance. Cause yeah. you know, I gotta be a, able to be myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> um, the post character that I think that I am in real life is Electro Abundance. True, like, very. I didn't. I didn't need a cosigner for that. Ooh. But Electro Abundance is misunderstood. Electro Abundance is given the title of villain, and by the end of the season, we see that she really is not a villain. We see that she is someone on a journey, and she's willing to help the people that she hurt. And I feel like I am the real life Electro Abundance because um, I am she. Um, who am I? Definitely not. Um, 
I'm definitely not Angel because I'm not dating a white man for his money. So, I'm definitely not Angel in that aspect. Um, I'm Angel in the aspect of being the pretty one in the group. But other than that, I'm not. I'm not Angel. Sorry about it. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to us on Patreon. Um, shout out to Lester Ellis. Doris, I don't know how you only got to enter your first name in Patreon, but shout out to Doris. And thank you so much to Eric Osborne Moses. Patreon.com forward slash here for pod. Um, our merch will be launching this Friday for Patreon subscribers. So, uh, yeah, tune in. If you want to get you a cute little number this Friday for the weekend, you can yeah. order it Friday. We got them in all colors, all shapes. All sizes. Yeah, I think it was up to 3X or 4X. I'm not really sure. Yes. And so if you just want to make this like into a dress, you can do that. <laughs> oh, a jersey dress. Remember yeah. when those were popular? Make like get you, a jer- you can get you a Here For a Podcast jersey dress, <laughs> put you some J's on, and go look for Trey out here in these streets. Bam. But thank you guys. Thank you everyone who subscribes to us and follows us on Patreon. We just did, um, it was like a 15 minute episode. I can't tell you. What did we talk about? Everything. Oh wow! Well. But um, this week in hot topics. Well, my word of the day this week oh. first is gynosexual. Gyna- you stay slaying me. I have to do this <laughs> stuff when you be saying what? What that is? Gynosexual um, is an adjective being primarily sexually, romantically, and or emotionally. Do I spell a G Y N? Yep. Okay. Attracted to some women, females, and or femininity. So. Ooh. In the case of men who like men, there are men out there that would be quicker to be attracted to my co-host than to be attracted to me because there are spectrums to femininity um, Mm -hmm. like we're going to get to later in the red Louboutin that was thrown or no, not in that in uh, more important topics. Okay. So in the spectrum of femininity, there are men that are are more attracted to more feminine men Mm -hmm. and they are kind of in the background they're kind of in the shadow because it's not popular to be attracted to a a feminine man most men outwardly express attraction to masculine men only and you're not mask enough for me and you 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 watch that gay shit or you wear makeup or you wear lipstick or you got a little switch or you do this or you out and you know they're not attracted to that whereas there are actual men out here that are attracted to feminine traits in boys and they are called gynosexuals. And so they are also the same ones that are attracted to um, transgender women mm-hmm. um, who, that exhibit, was gonna say. who exhibit the same traits but are transgender. They're now a woman. And so, you know, they're, they're male loving individuals, but they're loving a transgender woman now mm-hmm. because she exhibits these womanly traits. She's got long, beautiful hair, full lips, finger fingernails her makeup is done she's beat she's got on a cute little outfit she's willing to be more submissive but to she's you. more pre-op she can well in is that, does that matter no that's what i'm asking well no because okay. because they're still attracted to the woman womanly things about this okay. person and so it doesn't have to include a vagina okay it can include she smells like white diamond you smell like some shit at Victoria's Secret. That's really okay. all they know. It's like, oh, did you smell like this stuff? You in smell bed? like sugar. Bath and Body Works. Like, all trade knows is she wears Bath and Body Works or its counterpart. And I don't know what the other company's name is. Yeah. And you just smell pretty. <laughs> and so they be ready to eat you up. Ooh, and so those literally. are. Those are gynosexuals. Okay. And so they are men that are attracted to femininity in all forms in the form of biological women and in the form of transgender women and in the form of. Actual, I guess. Yeah, actual gay men who prefer the bottom. I I guess maybe prefer the top. You can get you a film top out here. Whoa. We're going to get to film tops. I promise. We're going to get to everything. We're going (laughs) to let you tell it. I promise you we're going to get to film tops. This could be a three hour episode. Maybe. If we don't get to nothing else, we're going to get to film tops. All right. I actually like that because I was surprised like a year ago. I was, um, I found one of my friends on the apps. I was looking at, I was going to be visiting soon, so of course I'm looking up the, the different men's in the area. And it sounds like I came across my friend's profile and it said um, int- um, f- female to male to the front. And I was like, 
female to male to the front. Mm-hmm. When did he become interested in? I knew he liked film bottoms because that's why we connected. No pause. Um, but then he <laughs> also saw that. Well, child, literally, no pause. Get up in here. Um, but then I saw that he was interested in female to male now, openly on his Jax profile, and I was just like, oh. I was taken aback by that, but now I know that um, I was I was discovering that he was a gynosexual. gynosexual. Yeah. Wow. Um, quick notes: If you guys are free this Friday night, we're going to be at well, at least me. I don't know if my co-host is going. What um, am I going join. to? I'm going to Casa Ruby again. Okay. We we tried to go to the Kiki Ball a few weeks ago and yeah. failed. Um, but we're going to try again this Friday. I'm going to be promoting what. Uh, myself and Impulse DC is doing next Tuesday. I love Impulse Which Group. is the Party Boy movie screening. So mm-hmm. if you are in the DC area this coming Friday or Tuesday, okay. you can come out and meet your boy. Yeah. Um, Friday, I'm going to be at the Kiki Ball. We're going to be talking about coming to the Party Boy um, screening, which is an extremely important Kim Sex documentary. We're going to have the um, director there. We're going to have Jason Zhu there, the the popular, leader. popular porn star who is also an activist for Take uh-huh. Down Tina. He's leading Take Down Tina movement. Absolutely. So we're going to have him there on Tuesday as well. Please check my social media outlets where you can find all the information. It's going to be at Landmark Cinema Tuesday night at seven o'clock. The tickets are free, so I am offering you an opportunity to come out and harass me, shake my hand, slap my booty. Oh wow! All You're of inviting those things. us to slap your booty. You got to be careful. I'm being careful because I'm first in line. I'm Come like, on, We're friends. Come Can on I out eat? Tuesday, Please? Tuesday night at seven at Landmark Cinema Theater, right here in DC, in the middle of Northwest DC. You'll get a free screening of the movie, and if you're the first 100, you'll get a free concession ticket, which means you can get th- things from the concession stand. So you don't have to pay for shit. When and you get you, to come and meet me. When I tell you I went to see the Nun this weekend, and somebody let me know that they ordered a large popcorn. <laughs> Woo, I know he had a large popcorn because I'm like, we well, like a good 45, 50 minutes into the movie. You still back here smacking. Get out. Praise him. But I'm excited about the Party Boy documentary. I shared that on RonaldMatters.com, the Indeed. trailer to it. So I know that I've taken a glance at it and I really enjoyed it. So I'm excited for people to see Party Boy documentary, Landmark Cinema, yes. next Tuesday. Next Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Again, if you um, follow my social media, you will see it on my social media as well as Impulse DC's social media. Um, again, it's really, it's a really, really good and really important documentary. Come out and see it with us. Come play with us. And come see us at the Kiki Ball this Friday. Yeah. Um, hot top. <clears throat> are you going hot top? Are you going to start at the? I'm going to start gonna, right at the top because start at the top. You know, of hot top. Just like in Queen Radio, <laughs> we had to wait a little bit to get there, but once we got there, we was going there. So, <coughs> we need that whole. <laughs> we, we need the bomb drop documentary. Right. I mean, the, not the documentary. The sound effect. The sound effect. Sorry. Yeah. But to freedom right now, we're going to talk about the hottest topic of the hottest topics because it's, it, it trended all motherfucking weekend. It trended when Queen Radio came back. It just it was the rumble in the I jungle. I received phone calls one hour ago. Are y'all going to talk about it? Because it's the hottest topic right now. I was like, are you sure? I mean, like the brawl happened like on Friday. Queen yeah. Radio, no, it's still, like, it's still hotter than anything better. going on right now, unfortunately. Because people, people are waiting to hear what Cardi B has to say and... Um, I feel like she waiting on this not to go back down to get on Instagram Live. And then when her not go down, she going to get on Instagram Live and tell us whatever. Live. What I, I'm not going to say oh. live. Whatever her, her side of the story is. Ooh. Two sides in the truth. So start from the beginning. What's the, the beginning of the story? The beginning of the story is um, we had Trinidad versus Dominican Republic. So we all thought that this was an actual altercation that happened at New York Fashion Week at one of the highest, um, like luxurious Harper's Bazaar places. magazine, yeah, Plaza Hotel Icon Party, yeah, one of the most popular parties during New York Fashion Week where mm-hmm. all the rich, famous girls show up. How much is a, a room per night at Plaza Hotel? It's expensive. More than I got right now. <laughs> um, so what had happened was, as y'all already <laughs> saw on TMZ, <clears throat> Cardi B rolled up on Nicki Minaj, accusing her of talking shit about her child. 
We didn't know nothing about that. Nobody what? knew nothing about that what? until it was addressed on Queen Radio. Um, there was shoes thrown. Um, apparently, security was trying to be in between Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, and that's how Cardi B got this knot on her head. It was speculated that Ra Ali did it as well. We don't really know. Because Nicki Minaj ain't telling because I guess maybe there's some pending law Legal things proceedings. going on. And that's also funny. But um, what I like my takeaway from it is um, at an, in the end, Cardi was just loud and wrong and got popped. And all for nothing. Because really, like, if she said, Nicki Minaj has been talking about me on raps. I'd be like, okay, yeah. Probably true. You also have been talking about Nicki Minaj on raps. Like it's not like neither one of y'all weren't subbing each other. Y'all y'all been subbing each other. This is brand new. I am devastated and surprised. Right, y'all been subbing <laughs> each other since motorsport. And I really the really, whole motorsport thing was a whole. I really, in my whole heart of hearts, feel like y'all was just reading each other on motorsport. <laughs> You've always said that. I've been saying that. I don't think they were. They were. Watch your man. You should watch your mouth. Bitches is pressed and minister mouth to mouth. That is that she talking to Cardi B. Open the verse with she. Shade. She talking to Cardi B, and then she came back around to Queen Radio and told the girl again, "Watch your man. Why you out here checking other bitches? Watch your man. You should watch your mouth." Somebody pull up the one eight hundred number for postpartum depression, because sometimes a man can hurt you so bad you don't know who to be mad at. When Nicki Minaj said that, I was like, wow. To wow. freedom. <laughs> so, that um. Was devastating. Yeah, to recap, there were Louboutins flying at New York Fashion Week and they shouldn't have been. Come here! Come here! And then Nicki Minaj said, I'm staying right here. <laughs> so, I thought, I still think that there's controversy with that. So, the Cardi fans said that Nicki was saying, I'm staying right here. The Nicki fans, the bars were like, she said, I'm standing right Cause here. Because this sounds. More strong And I feel like that's what she said I don't feel like like If you think about it I'm staying right here With like Nikki's a lyricist I'm staying right here like what am I getting from that I'm standing right here is I'm daring you bitch to get past this motherfucking security That she I'm sure Nikki paid a Pretty coin for A, a, a beautiful coin Which is a basic fee in her um, When you're that big of an her artist lifestyle. When you're that big of an artist <laughs> It's a basic coin but Yeah we saw when girls jumped on Beyonce stage, they didn't get past the dancers. Oh, woo. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you can't get past the dancers with Beyonce, you damn sure ain't about to get past the security. Oh my god! Um, All right. So, okay. So there's. I think she was. I do think Nikki said, "I'm staying right here," but she was like, "Come here, come here, like go." She said, "Come play with me, come fuck with me." I'm like, "I'm not." Do you see? I got like five or six. Huge <laughs> niggas that have formed a circle around me. Do you think I'm gonna break this perimeter? Come and play with you? Come fuck with you? Come fight with you? Girl, the ghetto. No, <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm at New York Fashion Week. I sit next to Ant. I've been sitting next to Anna Wintour, even though Woo. this is your first time. I've been sitting next to Anna Wintour. My money is longer than yours. I'm a bigger star than you. Why am I fighting you? I'm not fighting you. I'm fighting you with these bars. Mm-hmm. And. Again, if either one of them is worth their grain in salt, like I, I've been saying, I said this two weeks ago. Again, I'm a prophet. I've been saying it. I knew it was going to happen. They need to be in the fucking studio right now. Somebody need to be in the studio right now because y'all not going to settle it with, with fists. If somebody needs to tease it on Instagram. Accurate. Maybe Instagram live, preferably for me, just as the girl who's, you know. But like Nicki Minaj said on Queen Radio, it's always cute to somebody die. So, yeah, I these Atlanta girls and Migos are all involved in them with Nicki Minaj, Cash Money, and Lil Wayne, and all these Louisiana niggas is all involved. Uh, hey, Louisiana niggas. <laughs> okay, mm. I was thinking about that for me. I was like, ooh, pull the skin back, put it in your mouth. Um, but so I, I don't know if it should should it be that serious because no. I feel like because it's all made it's all in Cardi's head. Because okay. what everything that Cardi said in that press release via Instagram that she that somebody else wrote for her because somebody was, was talking about her daughter where but that's what I'm nobody, saying nobody like both part both fans and squads and hives have been trying to find it and, and of can't. course 
People.com is looking for it now. And then um, Hollywood Unlocked. The Shade Room is looking for where, like, they own Nikki's bandwagon. But even the Shade Room can't find where Nikki said. And I'm just like, uh, I don't know where it, Cardi, where did, where? Allegedly, um, Nikki liked a comment. Yes. No, that um, was, like, somebody screenshotted it. So that's not even allegedly. That actually happened. But even liking a comment means I'm a roll I'm up. I'm a Photoshop girl. I can, the, if, especially these um, Cardi and Nikki fans are at the age where Photoshop is something that they sit up and do for hours on end. I don't do it for hours on end unless the check is involved. But, like, they sit up and do it after high school for free. So they could, they have lots of opportunities to sit up and Photoshop. Even if that's the case. That's, that's besides the point. Okay. If she did like something saying Cardi was a bad mama, Cardi, why do you think that is reason enough to have a physical altercation? And how is that comment any difficult from any of the other thousands of comments that saying like one, you can't rap, two, you don't write your rhymes, three, payola is involved, four, you only married um the amigos got for a comma. I mean like so what was this attitude? What's so dynamic about <laughs> No, but what was the attitude when people was reading her about her teeth for years and then she was just like, Well, I, I bought a bag and I got some teeth. Okay, yeah. So Put if somebody is saying you a bad mama, roll the stroller out. <laughs> Shit, take the baby out for a walk. You might be a bad mama. Um, make it sponsored by Fashion Nova, hello. And then the girls gonna be in the comments. Mm, look at you, only showing your baby out for money. Yeah, girl, Pampers ain't cheap. And Pampers is the name brand. And y'all don't know the difference between diapers and Pampers. And so I really didn't want to pick us up, but unfortunately it looks like so far... Nikki is correct. A question I asked before was, was it the wrong venue given that it was um, Fashion Week's highest social event? Um, you know, like, Plaza Hotel is not one that, that's here for people of our skin tone. Um, a lot of people that aren't our skin tone were at that event, and they are the higher-ups running a lot of the fashion industry. Um, was that the right place? I know that we say, like, on-site, on-site, on-site. But when like on site is like at a film, do you still <laughs> do you still cut up at the film? It depends on what they did. <laughs> um, and and that's and I'm keeping that same energy and saying it depends on what they did. Okay. When she's a legend that Nicki Minaj did, quote unquote, is not enough to I'm be kicked out of because fashion. Because she liked the comment on Instagram. No, did she spit at your spit at your baby? Did she spit in your face? Did she um punch you? Put all four your tires on flat. No. Did she fuck I'm, Offset? Ooh, ooh. Get in line. <laughs> okay. Because now, then I'm like, mm. first off, I agree with Nikki. You should be fucking, <laughs> you should be in Offset's face about all of this in the first mm-hmm. place. And never the bitch. Because the bitch is only doing the same thing that you are doing. Fucking him. Um, so, again, I, I didn't want to pick sides because um, I still like Cardi. That's still my Dominican sister. Problematic, fucked up, wrong. Can't spell. Can't read real good. Can't talk real good. But she got some um, reps. And I like her personality. I love her flow. But she's just wrong in this situation. And she she handled it like someone would that has never been in the industry, that has never had anything before. To wrap this up, did you hear the um, other news that Christina Aguilera was downstairs performing Fighter when the fight was going on <laughs> upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> Christine Aguilera was downstairs performing fighter and they up here street fighter girl more to come back real cases <laughs> real people the victims are real <laughs> this is just Judy <laughs> <clears throat> next American Horror Story Apocalypse um, comes on tomorrow it's on my list it's on my and, list and um, I can't wait there's really nothing else on TV right now holding my attention. Married to Medicine's cool, but oh, also rooms at the Plaza, the Plaza Hotel in New York are two thousand eight hundred ninety five dollars a night, plus tax, and then plus you got to add the hotel. You know, the hotel always has a random admin fee, so this probably it'll be at thirty five hundred a night at the Plaza Hotel. Blessed be. And you out here acting up, but um, yeah, Apocalypse coming back. Apocalypse is coming on tomorrow, so make sure that after you've listened to this episode. You check your you check out your local listings for American Horror Story Open Apocalypse. Open your DVR app. Um, it is rumored to be the Coven versus Murder House, and I believe it's gonna be so lit. I can't wait. Those I'm are the two so, best seasons. So fucking ready. Favorites. So fucking ready. 
Um, and I hope that they give it to us like they gave it to us seasons ago. Because these last two seasons, they didn't give it to us like they gave it to us. I heard that over the weekend. I was at the bar um, being a chatty bottom. Per usual. <laughs> <clears throat> India Supreme Court has made a ruling to dec- decriminalize gay Here sex. Here for it. Decriminalize gay sex. Sorry. And um, I'm absolutely here for it as well. Um, we have a whole country with hundreds and hundreds of million of people, millions mm-hmm. of people, mm-hmm. and millions of gay identifying people that it was illegal for them to be gay last week. And now that the Supreme Court has ruled for them to be decriminalized, that they won't go to jail for being gay. Um, it's an amazing step forward. So even if it doesn't happen in this country, we have millions of brothers and sisters that don't have to go to jail for being gay, for being who they are in a whole nother country. And we should be rejoicing that in this country. It's a big, 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 big fucking deal because there are a lot of fucking gay people in those parts of the world. uh, And they just, they can't come out. They won't come out because they know that they would be beaten, killed or put in jail. And at least one protection of that has been taken away by their Supreme court. Now, uh, juxtapose that with our Supreme court, Girl, keep watching. Together. Keep watching. Um, but a lot of other countries, their nations are so much more conservative than ours is. And for us to be still having the same problems as some of these nations, I'm like, what what, what wig? We need to change wigs. I'd be like, girl, get your red wig out. Get your blue wig. Put on or your rainbow <laughs> wig from the Barbie Dreams video. Because that wig's late. So I'm oh does I you know it was a a black gay man who put that wig together so um you know like I'm really proud and happy and I think it was like a law from like the 1800s back when the British was ruling no before then or something it was just some ridiculous I was like this is a stat I don't even need to remember because it's one it's ridiculous two just thank God that we got rid of it. And that was kind of by technicality because I think like in 2012 they denied it, but then the Supreme Court had ruled something about sexual assault against women, and then so the people were like, well, if y'all feel this way about women, girl, what about gays? And then they're like, oh yeah, we did say that, huh? So I guess we gotta go. <laughs> they they were happy, but the the truth is the truth, girl. I didn't like that comment about your baby. Wow. <laughs> And you came into my culture. Um, So from India's gays being in bondage to actual bondage, um, I am absolutely here for Candy's new sex dungeon that is coming up. If you have not seen the video, please check out her Instagram. Um, It's on Kenya's Instagram and it's on Cynthia's Instagram, I think. I can't remember which other housewife housewife it was. But they're promoting the sex dungeon. So Candy has taken over. This whole read that has been, oh, you got a sex dungeon. You like threesomes. You be fucking girls. You be drugging girls. And she's doing what? Making money off of it. So the sex dungeon in Atlanta is open. Um, it said October or something. I can't remember which day it is. Oh, there's a... Re- yeah, she got a whole sex dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> she got an actual sex dungeon. She's opening up in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> and so that is. I the, was listening, but I was like, maybe it's like about a music video. I thought it maybe it was. No, a, she made a music video to promote it. I, that's what I thought. I thought you were talking about the music video the no, intro that I saw. No, it's like you can go down there and be freaky. And she sells. Are you serious? She sells her candy coated night stuff. Oh, yeah. Th- yes. And it's called the Sex Dungeon. I love Good marketing queen. Right. And so she took something that was negative and made it into a positive and not only made it into a positive, made it into a positive where she can make some money off of it. I want to um, test a sling in the sex dungeon. Ooh, um, child. And I know it's going to be a lot of hetero people there, but I'm like, get out the way. Get out the way. Blessings. Um, so shout out to Candy because, again, that was something negative that uh, followed her and she made it positive. So check out the Sex Dungeon. Um, I'm going to Candy. <laughs> I'm going right now. What's the, what's the address to the location? Oh, wow. She do for real. Candy. I stand on Marketing Queen. Come through. I love it. <clears throat> Ticket sold. My dungeon is officially sold out in only four days. Thanks for the love, everybody. I promise to make it a night you want for... Okay, sure. Oh, welcome to the... Oh, turn, hashtag turn a negative into a positive. There you go. Cut through. 
Yeah, definitely check out the video because the video is sexy too. It, yeah, it reminded me of like Beyonce's partition video with like a red light. Oh, look at her in Malaysia. Yeah. From basketball wise, I love Malaysia. Malaysia got a good shape. Um, next, like I was talking about earlier, that we would get to femininity. See, this is why you over hot topics because you be coming up with the good stuff. Okay, come on. Femininity is a spectrum. And um, I feel like I've been talking about that for a long time. I've been saying on YouTube, it's okay for um, niggas to twerk. It's okay for niggas to wear makeup. It's okay tops for to wear... twerk. I'm, um, I'm, I'm going to identify burst them. Tops. Okay, I'm going what? to identify them. It's okay for them to twerk, wear makeup, wear handbags, wear heels. Sometimes be in drag. Sometimes be trans. Oh my god! And they can still be tops. These film tops out here. Even though they are marginalized, are fucking winning. True, because you don't be expecting to slay. <laughs> so when it slays, you be like, "Bitch, I'm not telling nobody about this." And they don't. <laughs> I don't give this so to myself. <laughs> there is a fem top in Chicago. Okay. With a 12 to 13 inch penis. Wow. And he also has bangs. <laughs> My sister. <laughs> he is five seven. Mm. Dark skin, yeah, with glasses, and um. So he's nerdy gamer Drake, n- right? With bangs. nerdy gamer twink, mm. with this dick, yeah. And this dick this is one I'm looking at, or I'll show it to you later. Oh wow! Um, <laughs> but he has been fucking the girls. <laughs> he has been getting the girls to come to Chicago for a moment of pleasure. Hey, Amen. And I've taken notice because I see things that other people don't see, and that's okay. I've taken notice of a couple full time bottoms from DC that have taken flights to Chicago to just be fucked by him. Oh. Well, after and 12 or 13 inches, you gotta clock out. I mean, like, 12 well, 13. One of them actually did tap out and told us on social media that she tapped out. Ooh. But in the confines of the DMV area, they are the same ones of no fast, no films. I need my tops to be trade. I need them to look like this. I need them to act like this. Nobody needs to know that they're gay. Two tattoos minimum. Oh, have been to jail a couple times. <laughs> you have to have a baby a little he bit. He got to take the metro to get up here so I know it's real. <laughs> and then he got to ask me for $20 so he can get back home. They be they be but serving. But you get worn out by a girl with bangs. <laughs> but they be serving that They're same bangs. They, just, they serve that same energy here in the DC area. And no, I'm not naming names. I'm just <laughs> saying, I see y'all. I see you. Yeah, get your binoculars. And then one was this weekend, and so maybe some girls can track things down. Yeah. One was this weekend. One was like three or four weekends ago. I mm-hmm. saw both of them randomly in Chicago. And now randomly posting videos being fucked by said film top with bangs. So you will take a flight to a whole nother city, a whole nother state to be hmm. fucked by a film top, but you won't be fucked by film tops at home. Femininity is a spectrum. Every man is born with a level of estrogen. Mm-hmm. My co-host may have a, you know, he may have like a little, a little twang more than me. Maybe a little, maybe Your not. Your voice is off right now. That's okay. That's okay. okay. I have estrogen as well. <laughs> Every man has a little That's bit of estrogen. That's the education moment because this is very important. Yes. It is. It is. And, that, and so I'm, I'm taking this point that I saw on social media to say that we are putting up these walls. You know. Quote, unquote. <laughs> yeah. Putting them up because when we get in there, girl. You Put do? up these walls for yeah. people that we know could benefit us either mm-hmm. sexually um romantically socially when we know we would be okay with said top with bangs with 12 inches of dick slaying us and then us coming back home talking about we have standards Mm-mm. do you have standards or do you have struggles you have to pick one oh God. <laughs> so femininity is a, is a spectrum and Just we really the up in here we all really need to know that and stop with the the shaming of people for not being your idea of masculine because your idea of masculine is an idea nine times out of ten of niggas that you think are that masculine ain't yeah because i'm sure um the first ipod wasn't the ipod when they, they first say dreamed it up <clears throat> next um the queen from that ghetto to the suburbs 
Hey man, thank you. Um, Beyonce dropped seventeen thousand new pictures on us from her birthday weekend. I was on Instagram. I was like, <laughs> um, these regular ass hoes is posting pictures from Beyonce's birthday weekend. I don't recall Beyonce getting a notification from Beyonce's Instagram. She only put them on her Tumblr. She well, put, her official she, website. Which she put is them on the internet, is what I yeah. what I'm saying. She put them it don't on matter where website. she put them, but we got access. Bitch, I was like, I didn't get no Instagram notification. She didn't even look. Look, follow me on this website for these notifications. Follow me on this website. She is a marketing genius. <laughs> when I tell you how Beyonce, I happy. just need if if I can't get her Snapchat and somebody at least help me get the password, I'll share the password. So I can um, hack her Instagram and put a picture up of me. It's probably one of those you got to spend 20 What the girls be doing with the porn on Snap? You got to give them $20 and they'll give you lifetime access to their Snapchat. I'm just like, I'd give Beyonce $20 for life. <laughs> what? I'd, be give, I'd give Beyonce $200. I'd give Beyonce $2,000 to access her Snapchat. I'm like, y'all just jacking off on camera phones. Why do I need... I don't even... You I'm can get sure that Beyonce. on OnlyFans. I could get... Your videos will always end up on my Vista. I don't need to pay you $20 for lifetime Access to your private Snapchat. Well, I'm talking about these other girls now. Beyonce, that's a whole. But I was just going on a little lament right now because I'm just so sick of, sick of seeing guys promote their pay twenty dollars for access to my Snap. Rihanna told us to stop using Snap after that slap slap Rihanna slap Chris Brown game or whatever that bullshit was. And we should all have never looked back. What um, the fuck are y'all doing? But yeah, Beyonce. Beyonce uh, dropped lots of pictures. Sorry. If you did not get a chance to see them, please go see them. They are all over Beyonce. the internet. Beyonce.com. They're all over the internet. We finally get to see her smiling next to a birthday cake. That I thought was the cutest one. And then she had like this pink and blue like she camouflage suit somewhere. She just had things. She had fashions. And this was just for her birthday weekend and she didn't go nowhere. She was just and they was on jet skis. Like uh, my birthday coming up, and I just, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm being Beyonce for my birthday. Um, what? I don't got the budget. <laughs> if I'm the maid of honor, I don't got it. So I say that to say, George Zimmerman should be the last person. Gay. <laughs> I'm going on break with his with Beyonce's name in his fucking mouth. The last person. You should be the last like, person. I would not like to use my platform to give that person a voice. I know that you like to report. To, you don't make the news. You report it. But I would like to say up front, I am not here for it. Finish the story. Not here for it. <laughs> um, Y'all boy Jordan Zimmerman decided to open his pasty herpes filled mouth and put his name on the queen. And um, I don't know who told him he was authorized I don't know who told him that he was qualified. I don't know who told him. He should even be able to spell Beyonce's name without lightning, without lightning striking. But he did. Um, he texted some people about Beyonce being a broke bitch and trying to feed her and Jay-Z to alligators. Uh, bless his heart. He will be just like Cardi B on the outside of security, yelling if he ever got close to a venue. Um, I had to address it because I just couldn't believe that someone would egregiously put Beyonce's name in their mouth in such a manner. Like you don't, you don't have the credentials. You're not, you're not that girl. Um, he really, he wanted the smoke. He wanted the attention. I unfortunately saw that he did get some attention because he was he was trending. We saw that he was trending and all of us collectively was hoping that he was trending because he died. Unfortunately, he did not die yet. But, okay, I'm back from break. Are you done? But Okay, you're not. But getting smoke from the beehive is how you find your way <laughs> on the sick and shut in and or the palliative care list. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to leave y'all with that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Moving on. <clears throat> Good riddance to bad rubbish. Um, rest in peace to Mac Miller. Mm. I thought that this was a great opportunity uh, for us to talk about heartbreak and suicide because um, gays go through it just like women. Mm -hmm. And apparently just like regular straight men, like they just be 
Yeah, I'm gonna say we'll it's go nice. hard. I mean, I guess it's just everyone, it's but nice. we're just it's it's more outwardly expressed to me from the gay community and from women than it is from men typically. Men typically will be like straight men. Typically will be like, oh yeah, well fuck that bitch. I'm going to the bar, turn up. I'm going to go fuck some new bitches. Like I'm they confused. don't. So what are you talking about? Like after the death, immediately after the, I'm con- heartbreak. Oh, and okay. Suicide. Okay. The way that they deal deal with, with the heartbreak. heartbreak. Okay. Right. So typically, a straight man is not going to um, shell himself in an emotional bubble. He's going to typically. The best way to get over one bitch is get, get under, under a new one. Three bitches. <laughs> and, gotta, that's, and that's what you're going to start be, with three or four and then work your way down. Taper your down. That is the typical straight man behavior. And what Mac Miller has proven to us is that straight men are also on a spectrum. Mm-hmm. That it's not necessarily just let me go fuck a whole bunch of bad bitches because mm-hmm. I'm rich and popular and famous. No, I really have a, these other problems that heartbreak is not helping me with. And sometimes it's very hard to su- to overcome them and people succumb to them. Um, Come on. And I think that it's a really good example, if anything his death has taught us, is that um, even people that we wouldn't identify as weak or unable to handle the circumstance of heartbreak are just this... Um, easily accessed by heartbreak as gays and women are like we see women they'll go through it they you know they gotta i'm gonna be ugly i'm gonna get fat i'm gonna go eat ice cream i'm gonna stay in the house i'm gonna call all of my girlfriends over and cry and watch old sad movies and listen to old sad music for six months and that's like the stereotypical trend of what we see what happens with women with heartbreak mm-hmm. with gay men very similar yeah <clears throat> bust the windows at your car I don't want to hear no love songs for six months. <laughs> so, uh, my question to you is because I'm confused. Uh, so, you're saying he was dealing with heartbreak and they caused him to commit suicide? What was he? Who, what? We, who, we really won't. What was he mourning? I'm we confused. really won't ever know unless there is a suicide note, which okay. hasn't been revealed yet. But the clearest indications was he was already on this downward spiral. Mm-hmm. Ariana Grande was with him. She oh, saw you're him. Oh, you blaming Ariana Grande. I'm not. Bl- oh, I, my God. I'm gonna let you Come on, finish. No pause. All right. No one. I'm not blaming Ariana Grande. Some okay. people are blaming Ariana mm-hmm. Grande. I'm blaming heartbreak mm-hmm. and the other mental illness things that he was going through. When you couple those things, sometimes suicide happens. Okay. And so, with the breakup from Ariana Grande and not being able to see the sunshine past the hurricane, he saw no other way out. Okay. And there are plenty of other people that see no other way out through heartbreak. Um, from mental illness perspectives <clears throat> I think that like I said I think it was a good opportunity for us to talk about it because him being a straight white male they typically aren't pegged to be the ones that are I'm kill myself because I'm not with a bitch no more typically they'll just be like well go find me another bitch well there was a lot of talk about substance abuse I don't yeah, follow what? him to know enough about it to be saying anything out loud confirming but well, he died of a drug overdose so there was obviously oh. substance abuse Okay, so, but the yeah. substance abuse is a byproduct of the heartbreak mental illness depression all the things that he was mm-hmm. more than likely going through but, and with yesterday being World Suicide Prevention Day, I thought oh, that this wow. was yeah. I thought this was a great topic for us to talk about because I am sure we have a, nub, a number of listeners that can identify with mm-hmm. that nigga broke up with me, that nigga cheated on me, and I'm I just, never gonna get another baby I'm bitch never like get, this. I'm never gonna get another nigga like that, and I can just end it now. And you don't have to end it now. You don't know where life can take you. Life and you will. don't know what life has set up for you. You might have been set up to take this L of a nigga cheating on you with your cousin, with your best friend, with all your friends. Someone not seeing your worth and getting your out money, of your way. Stealing your money. Um, beating yeah. you. All of that could have been a setup for your success in the future. Amen. And you will never figure out what that success in the future is if you deny your tomorrow by killing yourself today. And so with yesterday being World Suicide Prevention Day, I thought that this story was extremely timely and extremely important for us to talk about. Um, The other thing attached to that story is that 
some people don't want to go in to see a counselor for counseling or a psychiatrist mm-hmm. or a psychologist. Well, They're you don't afraid. know which one you need. You don't know. You don't know. I don't they, know. They know when you talk to them about what your problems are, mm-hmm. they will be able to diagnose you and tell you what, what it is. Sometimes you need all three. No tea. But if you are afraid to be in the space because it might trigger you, um, because you're afraid or too emotional to be with another person and say all your problems. Mm-hmm. In 2018, a lot of people prefer texting. A lot of people prefer DMing to get their feelings out. And there is a um, website for you. If you go to www.suicidepreventionlifeline.org slash chat, you can chat with a counselor right now for free, any day, anytime, all day, if you want. Someone will talk you off the ledge. Someone will help you. You do not even have to talk to them on the phone. You do not have to go and physically see anyone. It's absolutely free. It's absolutely anonymous. If you go to the website, you can talk to anybody about anything right now. Now it's just as easy as picking up the phone and texting someone and saying, "Hey, girl, I'm going to the party." You can get on this website right now and go to the chat <clears throat> and chat with a licensed therapist mm-hmm. about whatever is going on right now. If you just feel like today is the worst day of your life, you're gonna end it. I can't get past it. This nigga took all my money. He's cheated on me. He left me. How could he leave me like this? I'm the baddest bitch ever. What is wrong with him? If you are having any of those feelings, you can get on this website, and we're going to include it in the description of the podcast below as well. www.suicidepreventiononlifeline.org slash chat. And you can chat with a therapist right now for free anonymously. Whew. So from that, I will move into Insecure. Insecure had the funniest episode that I have seen in a long time on Insecure. And I applaud them for that. I've been dragging Insecure. I still didn't laugh. You didn't laugh at none of it? I Even the edible part? When Kelly rolled over, uh, um, foreshadowing, Kelly rolled over, had peed herself. Remember me like this. <laughs> Don't, she Don't said, remember. remember like this. She said, "Remember me different." Yeah. I was like, first of all, girl, you just got tasty. So, not even use the correct grammar. Maybe that's why I laughed. But um, yeah, it was really. They, I laughed at that part. Um, I, I found myself laughing throughout the episode. Okay. And uh, again, like I said, I've been dragging the previous episodes because it was like, oh my god, really? This it's is becoming a doing. drama. And I really wanted to remain a, the and is this the right term above the fray? Is that the right phrase? I wanted to remain like in like immune from all the oh my gosh we're up for awards or we're up for nominations in these categories and we would really like to be in these categories. I want and I personally would like for Insecure to remain an outsider, be on HBO but not be the same way breaks and family values. Um, it came about oh they want us to compete with love and hip hop Atlanta sweetheart we are Brexit family values these are thoughts and hoes in Atlanta fucking for tracks we're not the same this not the same category you quoted Nicki Minaj there you <laughs> you fighting girls on love and hip hop girl my so, money is long it's like with in comparing um, what producers wanted Brexit family values to be compared to love and hip hop Atlanta I feel like they want Insecure to be compared to something else with, that has a full cast and change it that changed from a comedy to a drama and was still found a lot of success. And I just want Insecure to remain a comedy. I just want it to remain a comedy. Yeah, I think I think it should be a comedy with current social commentary, which I felt like this episode was. I thought I thought there were a lot of funny things, and then the commentary on. Um, the pregnant girl mm-hmm. probably not being in a circle anymore because she about to be a mama. She got to be responsible and she can't even do drugs no more like she wants to or drink. <laughs> Chow. Mm. She wants to. Or drink like she wants to um, or hang out like she wants to because she about to have a newborn at the house and she got a husband at the house and these other girls are single and shit. So it's a commentary on you know what life changes into over time if you live it right if you live it correctly Mm -hmm. it's supposed to change you're supposed to age out of people you're supposed to move into different circles you may become the mom 
the soccer mom with the fucking van. And like four years ago, he was the girl in the Dodge Neon that twerked at the club. You supposed to have come on. You supposed to have evolution, and so I like that it, it still addressed that. That was a social circumstance that it addressed, and it was still funny to me. <clears throat> so, do we say it now, or we just be nice to go? Okay, so no, if you did it's not Wednesday see when the this... ending, okay, where are we at? We're at fifty minutes and eight seconds. We're gonna give you. To 54 minutes. Fast forward to 54 minutes. Because I have... Well, I always have a lot to say. Chatty Bottom. What do you have to say about... Welcome back, Bay. <laughs> I knew that they couldn't leave you alone for long. You too fucking fine. Your story is relevant. Your backstories are relevant. And the girls are mad. And I'm okay with the girls being mad because, girl, be mad. Y'all still looking at them just like I'm looking at them. Hashtag Lawrence Hive. The girls had pulled their best buy shirts out the closet and was tweeting their pictures holding their best buy shirts. <laughs> I was so gagged. I was so gagged. Like, when I tell you the whole episode was boring to me, and when they said next week on Insecure, I gagged. I, like, the whole 30 minutes that I sat there I had been redeemed because I knew that HBO, Issa, and her um, girls behind her with the money were not going to say, like, the fans want his ass on the screen. We can find whatever his asking price is, and we can put him back on this goddamn screen. So we have to wait till, like, episode five, six. It's only eight. I think it's nine. four. This is episode four, I think. Do your math. And so um, we had to wait to get him, but they also had to find a way to write him into the storyline and run it into him at Coachella. I don't think that they did that. Like, I don't think they did it as an afterthought. I think that they purposefully. They rewrote this. I think they purposefully diverted us because they wanted the outcry of, of the Lawrence Hive and other people to be like, why the, where the fuck is Lawrence at? Issa said exes are dead. They don't come back. I think that that's a that. misdirect. And so again, if you if you watch any post production, they will often misdirect you if they don't want you to know the story. And by the end of it, we could be at season This was nine. episode five. Okay, great. At the we could be at the end of season nine of Insecure and this bitch is pulling up pushing out his third baby. It's it could all be a misdirect. Okay. They don't want you to be able to guess it because if you're able to guess every episode, you don't you're not gonna wanna watch it as much. So I'm pretty sure her and the producers knew that he was coming back. He was taping the behind the scenes shit with all the other guys. Mm -hmm. It was just a moment in time where they were just like, well, we're just going to focus on Issa, focus on the other girl's story. And I feel like this next episode, they're going to at least half of the episode are going to focus on Lawrence. Lawrence's backstory, what's happening with him, what's happening with the Latina chick. And all the other bullshit because he was, had a bar scene with one of his friends asking him what was going, what what he been up to. I'm like, well, girl, if you hang out with your girl, like you supposed to, well, your bro, like you are supposed to, don't you already know? But I'm sure that's all for us to catch up. Right, 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 right. And that's why I don't think it was just shoved in. I think that that was the yeah. plan the whole time. I think the <laughs> I don't plan. Think it was shoved in. Ooh. Hopefully, we get to Me see it shoved in. Girl. Speaking of being shoved in as well. Throughout the seasons of the show, there's been commentary about Issa Rae not using condoms. And I still have not seen one. <laughs> and so in this episode as well... I um, rewatched the Daniel episode of the season premiere where we had asked her kindly if we would like to see a condom on the nightstand. And I rewatched it and I did not see one. And so she's responded and she knows that people are looking for her to be... Sexually, sexually responsible because she's fucking, what, six guys now? At but man, point. at Lawrence, because he. Mm. Oh, but y'all hate Lawrence, though. Lawrence is just the devil. <laughs> but she done fucked six niggas raw. And everybody's like, poor Issa. She's been she got to drive Lyft now. She's been through a lot. A lot has been through her. <laughs> um, And so, hopefully, in going forward, I just. If she could just, like, pretend to put a condom on at least one of these niggas. I mean, just for the sake of pregnancy, if you're not worried about STDs, at least for the sake of pregnancy, that would be dope. Um, ghetto. <laughs> the ghetto. The best part of, of, of the whole thing to me also was the preview of next week. Okay, when we we're saw, on 54 minutes. So we got to stop. I don't, have, I don't have no time limit. 
We got to. I don't have. Does it include what we were previously talking about? Yes. So, <laughs> um, the girls that fast forward to 54 minutes. Okay. Come on. Oh, okay. So, if you're still here right now, I, I forgot this. If you're still here right now, fast forward another minute. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get this done. So, my favorite part was seeing Dro stand next to Lawrence. Yes. Because I was like, yes. This is about to be some shit. Some shit for the show. And then my daydreams took over for me. And I was like, wait a minute. Lawrence and Dro together. Powers United. It was like, if you mm. see two men in a 7-Eleven, I see a train. <laughs> <laughs> choo-choo, motherfucker. Choo-choo. <laughs> and that's it. Okay, right. I'm, not, I'm not spoiling nothing so else. So we 55 minutes in. Okay. Is that it for Hot Topics? or One more, unfortunately. Oh my God. <clears throat> the topics is hot this week. What's going on over there? <laughs> the block is hot. Bloomberg, Nor- Bloomberg News is reporting... Uh, the Trump administration is defending a new military policy that will allegedly result in HIV positive service members being mm-hmm. fired in violation of their constitutional rights when it takes effect on October 1st, which is in a few weeks. In my 12 years of military service, there has always been this struggle about the HIV, serv- HIV positive service members being a part of the service. There was always talk. There was never a rule. There was never people being kicked out because they were HIV positive. Now we have an administration that is okay with kicking people out of service for not only being transgender, but now for just being HIV positive. So that means straight, gay, whoever you are on the spectrum. Straight. If you have HIV, you are deemed non-deployable already. So that means you can't go to places of conflict in support of whatever branch you're in. That was already a rule on the books because different countries have different policies for HIV positive people coming to their countries because either they don't have high numbers of HIV positive people or their standards are just different. And so that is it could be difficult to get the level of care that you need because you still got to take your pills every day. You're still going to that going to need that is a myth. And so that is that. No, that is a myth. That is still need to take your pills. No, the myth. the, The myth is that that's a problem. And that's a problem. Okay. The, the, that's a myth that the Trump administration has been propagating okay. to make this rule possible. If I'm HIV positive and I'm taking my medication mm-hmm. and I'm going to the doctor, I can do that in any country. Yes, you can. Because when you're in the military, you don't go nowhere where there's no doctors. Amen. You don't go nowhere where you can't get medication. So just because my medication is Truvada Instead and of, not Warfarin okay. or any... Or any other hyperlipidemia medication okay. that you get in the mail, just like anybody that gets medications in the mail, doesn't mean that I should be excluded from service. But that was my only concern. I was like, I want to make sure that my sisters and but brothers get their medicine. That's my now. If it's possible, it, listen if to a veteran tell me, okay, I, I understand. But that was my concern. It's not possible. It happens. Okay. So just like the young Navy man that we were talking to. Um, a couple months ago was just now starting Truvada. Oh, yes. He's getting his medications mailed to him. Uh-huh. So he's serving in a place that you're not able to just walk down the street to go to the pharmacy. Yeah. Your medication is being mailed to you, which a lot of people who are in the military get their medications in the mail. You don't okay. have to go through the pharmacy all the time because the shit is difficult. It's a whole bunch of people. I'm you gotta sure wait forever. Is, you can get your medication in the yeah. mail. And your medication, again, it can range from... A penicillin to a... Anything. A Claritin to a... You can, you, and it doesn't even have to be pill form. You can okay. get solutions. You can a get shots. Days. You can get all kinds of things okay. because the system is updated to 2018. We're not in 1971 where you have to actually go sign for your scripts. And you can go see the doctor just like anybody can go see the doctor if they have any other medical problem. Your, your diagnosis is routine. When you're mm-hmm. HIV positive, you know that you need to be in a doctor's care every three months at a minimum. You're going to go get your medications. Um, the doctor is going to want to continue to test you to watch your uh, levels. Mm-hmm. Nothing is unroutine about that process where if anyone 
is HIV positive that they can't be deployed, they can't be sent to another country, they can't serve on a ship, they can't be flying a plane. None of that is factually accurate. It's all a myth. But you know Trump got rid of the HIV panel that they had. It was the whole... The advisory board. The HIV advisory board. So I'm like, so who's going to go tell Trump that this is false? He don't even have the people around. He's not looking for the people to be around. That's why he fired the whole advisory board. Okay. Wow. The Deploy or Get Out directive is intended to improve military readiness intended. The Deploy or Get Out? Yes. That's the name of it? Deploy or Get Out directive. <laughs> Damn, they just being rude even with the name. This is also, again, this was reported on Bloomberg News, but it's in multiple sources as well. Bloomberg ain't reporting if it ain't. <laughs> right. The Deploy or Get Out directive is intended to improve military readiness by weeding out soldiers who can't deploy overseas for more than 12 consecutive months they mean for he's any reason. planning for a war. Any earlier directive from the height of the AIDS crisis prevents soldiers with HIV. From deploying overseas, meaning the new policy uh-huh. may make it impossible for them to serve. Not may may not may make it impossible, will make it impossible for them to serve. But the military has wide latitude in deciding who can serve. The U.S. said in filing September 7th in federal court in Alexandria, Virginia, in seeking to dismiss a lawsuit over the policy. The complaint was filed by a 41-year-old Oklahoman whose National Guard unit was deployed to Afghanistan and Kuwait before he was diagnosed with HIV in 2012. He was subsequently denied a promotion. Because he got diagnosed with HIV, which is not going to change anything that he's going to do for the service. He's going to still be either a good soldier or a bad soldier. His diagnosis is not going to change that. <clears throat> so I say that to all say to say that be cognizant of things that are going on around you. These things are not normal. It's not OK. Being HIV positive is not a crime and you should still be able to do your job. And that is it for Hot Topics. Thank you guys so much for leaving us comments on Apple Podcasts. Open your podcast app if you have an iPhone. Um, search for our name here for it. Click the reviews tab and click write a review. It's like three steps. Um, also, the link will be in the description below if you just would like to just go on to the link directly. This week in social studies, I have questions. I don't have any fancy quotes. I don't have any. I have questions. Um, about finances actually as the season is about to change what are the money drainers in your budget i know i am always forever thawed and gagged when um netflix or title just tells me like hey girl we just took money out of your account and it's ne- and i also noticed that it's not on the same day because i was like Okay, well, if it's closer towards the second paycheck of the month, then I can plan for it. But sometimes they come out on the 6th. <laughs> sometimes they come out on the 9th. Sometimes it comes out on the 13th. It's just whatever Netflix feel like their goal is for this week or this month. Or if they are going to announce that they finally gave one to Sykes a Netflix special for being quiet during the Monique situation. Bless it be. <laughs> So, um, a, someone in a Facebook group had identified that brunch is on Sundays here in <laughs> D.C. is a big money drainer for them. Um, oh, talking about reducing big ticket items. What's a big ticket item in your budget? Sometimes it could be the rent, girl. Sometimes it could be brunch well, on no, Sundays. Well, no, you can't reduce the rent. <laughs> uh, well, you can't reduce the rent, but if you realize that you're living above your means, it's like, well, girl, I'm paying seventeen fifty for rent. And I really need to get down to a fourteen hundred. I gotta figure that out. All right. So, um, and on in a Facebook group, someone had acknowledged that it cost them about eighty dollars to go to brunch. Then going to Nelly's here in D.C., they spent about another sixty dollars, and then they go to park after that. And child, I think even like a Bud Light in a can is fifteen, sixteen dollars at park. Park does not play with your wig. I didn't write the letter, by the way. <laughs> No, this was somewhere in the Facebook group. And so the person was identifying, like, they were confident in, like, yes, I like to have um, a great social experience on Sundays. So I acknowledged that it cost me around $9,000. Like, their, their whole post put together. $9,000 a year? Yeah. On, okay. On Sunday. Saying, yeah, girl. on Sundays. So they, they, they outlined it. And they were talking about their experience and how much it costs monthly. And it totaled to, it made more sense in their post. And I'm paraphrasing. But it cost them about $9,000 a year to go out on Sunday. Every Sunday when they want to go out. 
Well, I, I recently went to Beacon um, <laughs> here fun. here in D.C. and spent seventy dollars for brunch, and I regret it. <laughs> so <laughs> that shit taught me a motherfucking lesson. Like I had it at the time, well, but I was like, know, okay, so brunch is forty. No, it's seventy for bottom. It went up. It for bottom, oh, it's forty dollars for bacon and eggs. Well, it's it's a buffet, so you can get bacon, eggs, fruit, cocktail, <laughs> get some kinds. cocktails, um, and then the bottomless brunch all together is seventy dollars. Get up, <laughs> right? <laughs> Woo! I I must have get no taste of the big this year because I ain't been in a while. Um, the third thing is, oh, I've already talked about this: identifying what's on auto pay. Um, I just learned today that something's coming out of my account, which is how we got here. This is the topic today. Uh, something's coming out of my account monthly for $12. And I'm like, what, the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, I need to reevaluate my finances. What's going on? I didn't even know I had all these things on auto pay. <laughs> um, and the last thing is, how often should you reevaluate your budget? I was looking around on the internet. And um, a lot of websites were saying that you should um, look again every three or four paychecks. And some places say every three months. But I've found in general, without the microscope I'm putting it under today, um, that I generally do it every four months. Like when the seasons change. Like in like another month or so, it's going to start getting cold. Um, cold. You start <laughs> spending less money on electric and more money in gas because I have a gas stove and, you know, like uh, things are different. Or in some environments, it depends on your environment. I use I use the weather as a teller of times. Um, so I and then it also gives time for like habits to develop that you don't know that you have. Because if you're looking every two or three months, I'm like, OK, well, girl, I had to buy boots and I had to buy a coat. Um, so. I'm not going to notice it like, oh, well, shit, it's still March. Why am I still spending money on all of this amount of money on clothes? Um, I could see if it was May, but like, girl, March, you, they just put the collection out. You don't buy it when it's full price because there's a money drainer. So I personally feel that it should be as the seasons change. So that way you allow yourself to see if something is sneaking up on you or if you're developing a new habit that's draining funds from your account. But how often do you think you should reevaluate your budget? That's something you can only do for yourself. What are some money drainers that you can identify right now? Um, how can you reduce big ticket items? I can also admit that I love going into a Starbucks. It's something about knowing that I'm there. I've placed a mobile order. I belong there. Now, I just spent $7 for a coffee drink. So I stopped doing that. I started ordering Starbucks teas now. And so I spent like $3 for a large tea and so was $7 for a macchiato. I still get the same general feeling of um, the energy that I'm looking for, the pick me up, and I'm not spending $7. I saved like $4. Wow. Are you willing to confess anything beyond your beacon experience? No. <laughs> <laughs> <That's enough. laughs> you shame enough? Yeah, no, that's enough. I spent $70 there and I didn't even get more than two plates. So I, yeah, because you also have a thing about buffet. <laughs> yeah, and so I didn't even. I was like, I did have maybe like eight mimosas, so I guess that's okay. You could have bought a bottle of something in the mixer, and but it's also socializing, you know, so you pay for that experience. What else? Because the girls who could afford seventy dollars for brunch are in the place. Because they well, the girls that can't afford it, and the girls that have um, stunted to get it. <laughs> Um, what's going on in sexual health? Oh, sexual health, sexual health. You didn't put us through the HIV in the military. What was the other story? The gynosexuals. It's a lot. Hashtag, it's a lot. So there's a new World Health Organization study that says 10 to 20% of men currently may fall in the category of a low sperm count. Um, I believe this study one because the World Health Organization is reputable sometimes. Um, Most of the time. <laughs> and I'm also seeing this porn where the girls are having an orgasm. Not, not the girls, the, the boys, the men. the men, but they be the girls. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> they will have an orgasm. The and it would sound like it's such a powerful wave 
of semen that is about to come out of their penis from this orgasm. And there will be a drop. The girls will be reading in them, I just the comments. Like, I know, like, they say do not read the comments. I'm like, but these ain't my comments, so I can read these. The girls will be disappointed in the comments. Why is he shaking like this? Only for two drops to come in. The girls are counting her. It was only four drops. I'm like, girl, you counted the drops? Okay, wow, you were passionate about that. <laughs> so, to the girls that are also passionate Eat about that. Eat your pineapples, or what do you need? Well, your pine- bananas? pineapples is for taste. Okay. And so, if you have been criticized by someone that is tasting your nut that Ooh. is extremely salty... Mm-hmm. Tastes maybe extremely alkaline, just nasty. Mm-hmm. You have to. I'll say nut. nasty because I don't know. I don't know what alkaline nut tastes like. I'm like, this is nasty. You probably do know what alkaline nut tastes <laughs> like. You just don't know, but that's okay. That's okay. We gonna work with y'all. Um. So, what do you do for production? <clears throat> We're getting to that. Okay. So, um, for taste, again, you have to watch your diet. You have to have to have to consume a lot of water to clear out the things that are in your diet that may be taking that may be making your semen taste really really bad. Okay. So uh, to the girls that work out a lot, that's where you get a lot of the squirters because they drink a lot of water, and a lot of water is contained in the semen that they ejaculate because they drink a lot of water. Oh, okay. If I don't drink a lot of water, my semen is going to be really thick. It's going to be really coarse. It's going to taste different. Okay. Alkaline. Alkaline. Um, <clears throat> in addition to less orgasms, you can build up your juice because when you're having three or four orgasms a day, of course it's not going to taste like anything that anybody wants to taste because you didn't let all the main shit go. You didn't mm-hmm. get all the good shit out the way, and it's just really like the Sierra s- level, Tanache level. Wow. When you had Beyonce level this morning, but you had to get one before work. So now you done ruined your own stage performance. Yeah. And so now you giving Blue Cantrell semen out. <laughs> and of course it tastes like Blue Cantrell semen because this is Blue Cantrell semen. It's, it's, it's not old. It's new. It hasn't had a chance oh. to develop. This oh, is new semen. Mature. You, yeah. And so the, the more mature semen that might taste a little more rich... You got out the way and now it's in a rag somewhere. But now this new semen that just popped up on the block, it don't taste like anything because it just popped up on the block. It's a lot more clearer. It's a lot less of it because you've let out the main loads prior to. Um, so hold it if you know you have hold, a performance hold it, later. Yeah. Hold if you it. know you have a performance later. Yeah. Hold it if you know you have a performance later. Add bananas, celery, carrots to your diet. Okay. Those things change bananas, the compass. Bananas, celery, yeah, celery, carrots, like celery. Okay. Bananas, celery, and carrots to your diet, in addition to water, like we talked about already. Those things change the composition of your mucous membranes functions, and so they have different zincs, they have different vitamins, different minerals that will change the composition of your semen when it comes out. It will look more healthy. It will taste more healthy it would be a lot more of it whereas where you could be just creating a whole situation for whoever you deliver in the semen yeah because i like an experience yeah i like it on my face wow oh. wearing comfortable cool underwear also help in the production of semen as well so when you have these tight hot restrictive underwear on it prevents the production of healthy semen which is what you want to have. So you don't want to be wearing tight, hot drawers all day long and then hoping that your boss have done the best of their job in creating semen and sending that semen to the prostate for the prostate to send it to the penis to, to ejaculate. Get out. To get out. So that is this week in <clears throat> sexual health. The, the World Health Organization is telling y'all niggas it's like 20% of y'all out here that's low performing as far as ejaculation. Making us look wise. bad. You don't have to be. You can take some of these keys and make your nut look good for the camera or for your bae. Oh, not for the camera. For oh, for the ca- no, for the camera because these porn stars be out here and they're not taking these keys. And you they got- also said the girls are not porn stars if they only have a connect pal. The girls do two videos and now they want to be porn stars. So you got to keep that same energy. I'm keeping that same energy. <laughs> I meant what I said when I said porn stars. Them girls, <laughs> nobody knows who they are anyway. 
So <laughs> that's that. They, I, was they don't have, be, I was just trying to be messy. It didn't work. Thank you. They don't have to come a lot on TV on camera because nobody watching. Um, is this song for week, our souls is it? Uh, yeah, last calls. I'm like, where are we now? Song for your soul. Tamia's new album, Passion Like Fire, came out. It did. On Friday. After you listen to this podcast, if you like R&B music, go listen to Tamia's new album. The first track started playing. I said, bitch, this is about to be a good-ass R&B fucking album. And it is in a ama- Passion Like Fire by Tamia. It's an amazing R&B album. And I love... That she, I had two or three get their dick playlist songs on it. Question for you, music related, but outside of this, do you have when it comes to sex playlists? Do you have a hunching? Um, I just met you of the apps playlist, and then a I'm trying to get to know him slow jam sex playlist, or is it all one playlist? Currently, it's all one playlist because all these <laughs> niggas is basically the same at this point. Um, so until somebody make me want to create a 1990s uh, playlist with some Stevie, no and R. Some, Kelly, some um, Barry and some Ooh, Tina Marie mm. and some Luther on it, then we'll talk when we get everybody there. else just getting fucked to Trey everybody Songz else and Jacquees. And- everybody else just getting fucked to um, Bray Shrimmer right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bray Shrimper and Trina. Because <laughs> it was asked on Twitter. I was like, wow, I never. Well, because I don't. I always require a little warm up. So I'm just. It's all, I was like, two playlists. I have like two or three Trey songs. And then you go into a Tina Marie, go to a Barry, then you go into a Miguel, and then you come back around, and then you go back into the deep cut. Oh, Miguel is on the fuck playlist. Like Miguel, like I Miguel can't, is still on the yeah. The like Ray we, Shrimmer, Trina. Yeah, it's on the same list. <laughs> yeah, with Mahente. Because <laughs> Mahente give me my rhythm. Mahente give me the rhythm. Be like, oh, the motherland has called me to fuck the dog shit out of you. Oh well, okay. So back to me. <laughs> oh yeah, she has music out. Yep, that's right. Um, my song for my soul this week is today I do. That is going to be so beautiful for like, you know, um, holiday season is really great for like getting engaged. And if a girl still using it next May when she getting married, shout out to her. But for like engagement videos and like putting a collage picture together for YouTube and now they're doing it for Instagram. Like when he got down on his knee today, I do. I accept you. Um, and everything that you bring and you're the man for you like, you know how wedding songs go. And it does all of those classic expected things, but it's so beautiful. And Tamia's voice flows so well over the track. Today I do from Tamia's new album. And she was inspired by her own wedding when she made. I was thinking she should do a video because you know R and B videos albums only get like two videos, and I think that she should do a new updated wedding and put the video out in like October, like right before Thanksgiving, like a week before Thanksgiving or something. Yeah, she like, talked. She talked about it before it really the album will. the album dropped, <clears throat> and was saying that they were reflecting. They had had an anniversary yeah. prior to when she was. Because she does co write a lot of her songs. Yeah. yeah. Um. And so she was inspired by her own wedding, which she still holds in such a special place, and wanted to recre- recreate what she was feeling on the the day of her wedding to Look Grant Hill. That. Because Grant Hill just <laughs> fine. He'll never be out in these streets. You can't never find him doing nothing wrong. He's still tall. The only time he on the shade room is when he in a picture with Tamia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at Tamia and her husband. And somebody have to ask, so what's his name? That's right. Y'all don't need to know his name. Well, he is a talent in his own right. In the he NBA. is, but if you 18, 17, <laughs> 16, them niggas don't know who Grant Hill is. I know who Grant Hill is because I used to watch Grant Hill play basketball because I'm old. There was a Saturday morning show, like after like Power Rangers and stuff went out. There was like a sports show that used to come on geared towards children, and I used to watch it with um, not the same intentions. Mm. <laughs> Get the strap. I can't even remember the name of the show. I just remember like it came out either before Power Rangers or at, the Power Rangers was very vital in the <clears throat> scheduling of the mm. show. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway. Song for your soul. Someone can send you a luggage because you gotta get the fuck out of here with that. Just do I, it. Who is jacking off after Power Rangers? 
<laughs> you was watching Power for Hours, girl. <laughs> Just... Leave me alone. Wow. Um, <laughs> song for my soul this week is an 80s power ballad because we don't have no more fucking 80s power ballads Ooh, anymore. Yes. We don't have it no more. I was hoping that Ariana Grande was going to give it to us, but she did oh, not. Oh, yeah, it was as well. <sighs> Thank you for Sweetener, by the way. But her, own I mean, hi- her own hive is making memes about her. They're like, here you go, Pharrell in the studio producer Sweetener playing with a bop it. <laughs> Pharrell in the studio playing with a bop it. <laughs> I was like, girl, yeah. So, since we're not, since we not going to get none, I'm just going to have to do a TBT to an 80s power ba- ballad. If you don't know it, please check it out. It is a quintessential 80s power ballad. It reminded me of the niggas um, in your life that have a position and don't know that when they lose that position, that position can be gone. Like, we... Like we can outsource You're not this. Replacing their position you, you 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 may just not be replaced by somebody here in the United States. We might hire an Indian for this position. <laughs> um It also is the eighties version of Don't Hurt Yourself by Beyonce. If you try this shit again, you gonna lose your wife. It also gave me that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Baby, I'm not gonna tolerate this. So she already started with that. This game that you play, no, I'm not doing it. You'll regret it. If you desert me this way, yeah, when there's nobody to dry your eyes, suddenly you're going to realize. Don't you know? You need me. Don't you see? Believe me. Before you act so hastily, baby, remember you need me. Ooh, that's bad. She you need me oh, is by Mariah, no middle name Carrie, <laughs> and it is off of her debut album. And it is an '80s power ballad. If I ain't never heard one, ain't never. Because this is when Mariah had the voice that we love Mariah for. Um, this is when she had the spunk to say shit like that. Um, and I live for it. Again, like I said, it was the '80s version of "Don't Hurt Yourself." She was really telling the nigga like. I mean, you could lose me if you want to. I'm going to belong to another nigga and probably another nigga after that and probably another nigga after that. Um, Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me on Instagram for updates. <laughs> and you you just going to be mad about it. Girl. And so hey. that's the song for my soul this week because nigga, you just, you just going to be mad about it. You had the position, but you ain't got it no more. Bless your heart. You can be mad about it. You were my boyfriend, but you're not no more. Thanks. <laughs> Listener letters, send us your questions and comments to hereforwardpod at gmail.com or to any inbox where you can find us on social media. Um, there were some comments on the Instagram. I made a post this morning and a DM. The DM asks, um, anonymous, they asked to be anonymous. I love the podcast. I can tell the friendship between you guys is real and inspiring. I love you guys dynamic. My question is, what opinion do you guys have on being friends while dating for months or longer instead of being boyfriends after three or four dates? Being friends for months, like, you know, like taking it slow. Well, you know, I'm not trying to really rush into nothing, but you know, I do like you and where this is going. And, you know, can we be exclusive? I'm not doing that for months. Um, I think that that's probably the best course of action. But for months, I'm like, how many? For, months, how many? <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like for me, I'm like, I I can make a decision quick. Oh Lord. I'm not gonna make a decision in three or four dates. But I'm not gonna be six or seven months. Like I don't know if I really should be with him yet or not. If you don't know in six or seven months, then you shouldn't be with that nigga. Six or seven? This sound like y'all have decided. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Y'all just decided to be friends that fuck. Okay. And maybe go out on dates, and that's cool, and that's fine. But don't like we waiting on a potential relationship, and mm-hmm. six or seven months of dating and and or friendship have gone by, and neither one of y'all is ready to commit to one another. Like I'm hunting with me, you, you hunting with me, and are we? Am I being exposed to the um, anti back something? It don't have no cure no more. The gonorrhea, it's almost there. 
I can't be exposing myself to stuff like that. You gotta know. There's you, an antibiotic resistant big word. strain of gonorrhea. Yeah, it's a big word. I don't want to be exposed to But it is to not incurable. Yes. It's not 100% incurable yet, but I'm scared. Like, so how long am I supposed to be hunching with you and you still hunching with other people? Because we still got to get to a point to where we're courting and it takes a couple months to get that together. But, um, Cotton. <laughs> what? What's it? Cotton. So, but if we hunching, I'm not. Mm, how long does that. I guess if it's good, it might be three or four dates. I'm like, sir, look, I don't have that three or four times, and I know that I would like to receive that for an eternity. The rest of my life. <laughs> I say I do now. <laughs> Today I do. Amen. Today I do. <laughs> Baby. I think I've had that twice in my life. I was like, whew. Today I do. I do. Before the Lord, my and family, Be- and Beyonce, and my loved one. I-, I will say I do. You know, I just, I know you're Oh, you talking about getting married. Oh, that's gross. Don't get married to these people. Wow. Waste his time, 2017, 18, infinity and beyond. But to answer your question, I think it's a problem when it's been several, several months yeah. and y'all don't know what's, what y'all doing. If it's been a month, two months, three months max. Mm, yeah, max. Max three months. Three. So that's the answer, three. Without a plan. Because I think you guys can, you can date. And have a plan of, okay, well, when we get to month five, then we will make it. Have discussions. Yeah, yeah. If you're not communicating about what the plans are for him and what his plans are for you, then the plan is to fail. Um, Because I I, I do encourage condom use, but I'm also excited to get to a place where I don't have to use a condom. It has been years since I've been in a sexual relationship with a man where I felt um, comfortable. Like, you know what? We don't need this. So. I love you. <laughs> you love me. And I'm going to beat your ass at the clinic. Call me. Ta da! <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I'm going to write that down because that's poetic. Bars. <laughs> Our um, next question from Instagram you asked me, did I write these things down? And I said, no, I'm going to waste your time. So, Instagram is loading. Oh, one of our. Um, Patreon subscribers' birthday is next week and he's turning 21 in New York City. Thank you, Turn up, Mr. Colfer. It says, I turned 21 on Monday, the 17th. Insert air horn, which you've already done. I live in New York. Do you have any good club recommendations for the NYC area? Oh, shit. Because Esqualito's gone. <laughs> I want to say all my favorites are closed. Langston's is like a third choice, not a first choice. We um, love Langston's, but. Yeah, I love Langston's. I don't know if you are you. Are you in Brooklyn or not? If you're in Brooklyn, then just go to license and be cool. So DM us so we can give you more specific because it is very borough specific. You don't want to be turning 21 drunk, end up in the Bronx, back. and then you got to end up getting back to... Actually, you might want to be. That might be lit. Um, That's how safely. you know your birthday was lit. Okay, do it safely. <laughs> um, if not, if you're in the Manhattan area, look up Mogul Chavez. Mogul Chavez has um, really good club... Um, Things going I've heard on. Them before. Is that and, a promoter? Yeah. Mogul Chavez is Mogul Chavez. And he also does after hours for the girls as well. So we know shit be closing early. You can't get no drink yeah. after like one thirty in New York and shit like that. <laughs> I'm like one thirty in the city his, that never sleeps. I went to one of Mogul Chavez after hours things and we were still drinking until four thirty in the morning. Some of the girls was doing other select drugs. That wasn't my business. But you can still get you a good drink, be around some real cute, sexy New York men until probably like five or six in the morning. I didn't stay that long. But um, look up Mogul Chavez if you're trying to look like in the Manhattan area. If you're in the Brooklyn area, Langston's. Um, D Nice, always nice, asked, tell us a story of one of your worst hookup moments. We just discussed that on Patreon. So go to Patreon to hear us talk about hookup experiences. Um, the last one says, comments on Black Girls Rock Awards from Sunday. Eric.J. Fantasia sang an Aretha medley. The Aretha tribute included Jasmine Sullivan, Yolanda Adams, and others, and Janet's Award, and Felicia Rashad, and Mary J. Woo, child. A lot happened. Any comment? <laughs> this was before the Mary J. Faith Hill fight? Faith Evans. Faith Evans. Woo. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Faith, Faith Hill was only fighting the notes. That's all Faith Hill was fighting. It's the Aretha film. But um, Black Girls Rock 
this Sunday on BT, I have not had a moment to. What are you doing? You grabbing and holding on to stuff. Minding like, my business. Uh, I'm looking over there. Um, but Eric J, we love you, but we didn't watch. Did you watch? The only thing I saw was um, Fantasia getting caught up in the spirit, and people were saying that that's how they feel after good dick. So. Oh. <laughs> I do plan to catch up on the um, Black Girls Rock Awards, so I'll have a conversation with you via DM when I finally get to it. Um, it's time for our last call. Or here for it. Here for oh my god! <laughs> Bless them, y'all. Bless them. The get up. This week I'm not here for something again. And you shouldn't be. I'm not. Let me tell you. Lyft and Uber drivers. Oh my god. You are at work. If you don't want this job, you don't have to have this I job. I didn't ask you to fill out this application. You didn't have to send your um your license and your registration and your insurance over to Lyft and or Uber and ask to work for them. Through your app. You didn't have to do that. You could have just been doing whatever the fuck else you was doing and not doing this. You are at work. Uber driver is a whole completely separate app from just Uber rider. So you made a conscious decision to do this. I had someone... Pick me up in the middle of the pouring thunderstorm ass rain that happened a couple days ago. Pouring down like torrential rain. He did not pick me up at the requested location. He was way across the parking lot in the middle of the rain. When I got in, I proceeded to cuss his ass out because I am now drenched. And I'm also paying you for your services. And you did not come and pick me up where you were requested to pick me up at. In the middle of me cussing him out and him driving, he told me that he was doing me a favor. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you serious? No, they're serious. <laughs> I, can't, I couldn't make it up if I wanted to. I was just like, does this shit really happen to me? Bitch. So then my tone got a little bit louder. Because I couldn't believe that he said that he was doing me a favor. You should just get out the thing. It was torrential rain. I had already Ooh. been pissed on. I had all my things at the end of a work day. I'm just trying to get home. Mm-mm. I'm trying to get home to my things. Trying to get home to my shower. To get home to my nudity. And my drinks. Amen. And my naps. <laughs> and he's coming in between me and that. Yep. Literally. So, he told me he was doing me a favor. I told him... Just don't talk to me. <laughs> I put my seatbelt on, and he careened through the the torrential rain in his car all the way to my place. And I'm happy. Thank you, God, for a safe passage. Amen. But I wrote them a strong white letter, a white yeah. woman letter. After that, yeah, I got ten percent off for the rest of the month. <laughs> <laughs> Come through. So I say to all the Lyft and Uber drivers that we may have out there, please do not get anybody fucked up. Because it's your car and you pay the note and you can make decisions in your car. You decided that you want to work in your car. Yeah, you decided to lease your car to Uber and Lyft. So so keep that same energy and be at work when you're at work. I'm not here for it if you are any of those kind of girls. Yeah, because there's Juno and Via and so many other apps. Um, I am absolutely here for Fall TV. The season's starting to pick up. The View and Wendy Williams are both back. I love The View and the McCain girl not on there right now. I know she's mourning her father, so I'm not um, gloating. Is that the right word? In her absence, but I'm, I am glad she's absent. Uh, but uh, I'm loving The View. This new girl, I don't know if she's going to stay. Do you know her name? I don't know her name. Allison Huntsman? I I know she's John Huntsman's daughter, who and I like John Huntsman. John so they keep on picking Republicans who be famous through somebody else's name. Roughly, yes. John Huntsman was a previous presidential candidate and governor of Ohio? Trash. So, um, I'm just so glad that Joy Behar is there on her own merit and Whoopi is there on their own merit and, you know. Sonny Hostin is there on everybody. (laughs) She got all the merits. (laughs) She got all the merits. But these little Republican girls they pick up is based off, uh, anyway, I love The View. You know, I love Wendy Williams. She's one of my girls. Um, Pleasantly problematic. Pleasantly? Well, okay. That's nice. Uh, American Horror Story is coming back this week. So excited. Um, And I am absolutely here for Jack Ryan. That's a video 
um series a TV series on Amazon Prime. I'm loving that. Um, Dancing Queen with um, Alyssa Edwards premieres on Netflix in October. Black Panther is on Netflix right now. So make sure you guys stream that if you want to give Black Panther another look during this horrible hurricane season. Um, are there any other TV shows that you're excited to see? I always tell I people. I know you watch different stuff. So. Yeah, I always tell people get high and watch Black Mirror because that will change your whole goddamn mm-hmm. evening. Get high and watch Black Mirror. Especially if you're trapped in. Side indoors this weekend with the thunderstorm. This latest shit. season is like <clears throat> one of the best. This latest Five season is year. Good. Yeah. Get high and watch Black Museum. Thank me later. Black Mirror. Time for our last calls. Um, if you have your coffee, your tea, because you know we're cutting our budgets. My last call this week. It's to Miss Michigan from the um, Miss America pageant Amen. this past weekend. Her name is Emily Sayoma. I believe that's how you pronounce her last name. It sounded nice. <clears throat> Emily um, introduced herself to the Miss America pageant with the quote, I'm from the state with 84% of the country's fresh water and none of it for its residents to drink. Mm, shade. I live for Emily because she came in with facts. She came in um, reading the same state that we are from and giving credit to the state that we are from. We have the most fresh water of any state in the union. We have more fresh water than Canada combined. All the states. We have so much fresh water surrounding Michigan that is accessible to us. Yet and still, we have a whole city. It's a county. Well, Flint is a county, but the the city of Flint is the target of the issue. Mm -hmm. Where somehow we can't get no goddamn fresh water from from just the coast of our own state into Flint. Still. Do you know, Diane? Years later. And they've even reported that the... um, the amounts of bottled water that were coming in when people knew that the crisis was happening has decreased. So the water that people were drinking, they giving all these donations, <clears throat> and Trump ain't doing shit. Well, we feel like Trump ain't doing shit. We're no, not using a no, progress that's, report. No, that's not a feeling. That's that's actual fact. No, oh, okay. No, nothing. Nothing's happened. Nothing's changed. Whoopsie. Things have gotten worse. Again, so the the bottled water that these people were depending on is lessening. Nothing is being done about the current water that's in their systems and in their pipes that they still have to wash up with, still have to boil and hope that the boiling process is going to take everything out of it. It's still trash. I applaud Emily for getting on the Miss America stage and reading and dragging our community because we need it. And that's my last call this week. (laughs) I was trying to hold it. That is very powerful. So shout out to Miss Michigan. But by habit... I picked it up and I opened Instagram. And the first post is somebody telling <laughs> Rihanna, girl, I'm motherfucking tired. <laughs> Where is the M-U-S-I-C? <laughs> and she um, coming to back. Rihanna said, at whatever her name was, I know, I know, sis. I'm doing music. Simultaneously trying to do lingerie, makeup, film, and a couple other things. When the music gets ready, you won't have to ask for it. But it's coming. Just not today, sis. I'm hyped too, though. It can't come soon enough for me. Hashtag Navy for life. So shout out to the girl who tweeted her favorite. Said, I mean, Instagram commented. Said, girl, I'm motherfucking tired. Where's the music? And her favorite's ready. I'm here for it. But my last call this week is to the John Legend for becoming the 15th member of the EGOT Club. He has an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. Um, This weekend's Creative Grammys, where um, he won an Oscar for being the executive producer of Jesus Christ Superstar, which he also starred in. And, of course, he has multiple Grammys. Um, He has a Tony for something he did in 2015. And what's the E one again? Emmy. Uh, e G uh, he got all the things okay. Too many- and he's the only black male on the list. Yeah, <clears throat> and the second youngest. It was 
first reported that he was the youngest, but then I saw there was when the awards happened, but today this evening I saw that he's like the second youngest. So I guess somebody same came that was thirty eight years old. It was like, girl, what about me? But John Legend is thirty nine. So he's the second youngest person and the only black man. So shout out to him. Whoopi gave him a shout out on the view. So it you know Whoopi is our fave. Whoopi's our girl, the E got queen. So Whoopi gave him a shout out and I'm here for that as well. Shout out. You should put your ass on the internet like your wife did if you want to celebrate. <laughs> put your own ass. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm, I'm sure you can get, like, really good pictures as well. Like, we would like to see it arched and things. Predatory. <laughs> predatory. I'd be predatory. a predator for John Legend. I'll fight Chrissy Teigen for John Legend. Shit. Um, that is this week's episode of Here For It Podcast. Follow the show on the internet at Here For It Pod and um, hereforitpod.com. If you are a Patreon subscriber, make sure you check Patreon this Friday. Get your coupon code and check out the merch. More details on that Friday morning. You can be the first people wearing the merch before it gets popular because it's going to get popular. But you can be the first person wearing it and say, I had that shit like two weeks ago. Y'all niggas is late. Um, my name is Ronald Matters. Follow me on the internet at Ronald Matters. And, of course, follow me at the um, Bottom Reform Law School. Me and Kim Kardashian going to be classmates. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say something? What do you want to say? Say it. I am the Superman. <laughs> T-H-E-E-S-U-P-A-M-A-N. Um, please look for me on the new back page. I've, it's I'm, back? It's not, but uh-huh. when they come back, I'm going to be on there. <laughs> Holla. Bye.